Hey everybody, my name is Jason, also known as Pirate JC in the Battleon community, and today I'm excited to talk to you a little bit about the Node Material Editor Standalone Edition. If you haven't had a chance to play with the Node Material Editor yet, you're missing out, and I hope you'll use this video as inspiration to do so. We're going to be looking at how we can modify the Vertex shader today. So specifically, let's take a look at NME, Node Material Editor, .battleonjs, Dot com. With this version of the Node Material Editor, it's no longer tied to the playground. This means that you can develop shaders completely independent of any other code, and then just like the playground, you can save out URLs, unique URLs, to share your creations, collaborate together, troubleshoot together, just basically share what you're working on with the community. So really, really excited to show you this new standalone version of the Node Material Editor. One thing I want to talk about today is a little bit about trigonometry, just a little bit. We're going to reach back a little bit to my early mathematics days and reach back into the memory banks to pull out some things here. I found this uh, graphing calculator online called desmos.com. It's pretty powerful. Basically, what I want to do is I want to take this sine wave formula that we're seeing here, and I want to pipe this into the vertex shader of the node material editor. So what I'm going to do is we focused in some previous videos on this uh, fragment output, the fragment shader here with the color. We're going to actually focus here on the vertex side. So what I'm going to do is I have this node called vector3 mesh, mesh position. Uh, and so I'm going to zoom out and I'm going to give myself a lot of space because we're going to basically recreate that sine wave formula here in the shader. So I'm going to pull this out way over here. Now, the first thing that I have to do is this node here, this uh, mesh position, outputs the x, y, z coordinates together as a vector 3. So I want to actually split that up, split the vector, so that I can have access to each of the individual uh, x, y, z uh, channels independently. So I'm going to delete this connection here, and I'm going to take the vector 3, all three x, y, z, and I'm going to pipe them right into the vector splitter. And then you can imagine that what we're going to do is do some modifications on those, and then we're going to merge them back together. So I'm going to zoom back out. I'm going to go back to our world position node over here. I'm going to drag out a vector merger node. These are under conversion blocks, uh, the vector splitter and vector merger nodes. So I'm going to take the x, y, z, and I'm going to pump that right into the vector of the world position right there. And so the first thing that I want to be able to do is we're not actually going to modify the x or the z coordinates here. So I'm going to take the x of the vector splitter and just pipe it right over to the x of the vector merger because we're not going to modify that at all. We just want it to be passed straight across. And I'm going to do the exact same thing with the z. So what we're going to do is we're going to modify this plane that you can see here in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. And we're going to introduce sine wave animation on, onto it. And we're going to do that by modifying the y or the height of the, each individual vertice of this, um, of this mesh. OK, so to start off, what we can see here is that we have this formula of x minus t. Now what this actually is is the x position. And then we're going to subtract time. So I have this t here. And this is the cool thing about this Desmos graphing calculator is I can just slide this. And you can see the effect that it has, so t representing time here. So to start this off, what I'm going to do is I know I need to start with x and subtract time from that. So I'm going to bring out a subtract node, and then I'm going to take the x value and plug that into the left-hand side of this node. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go get time. Now time is one of our input nodes here on the left-hand side of the screen. I can grab time and I can bring that out and make that connection directly into the right side of the subtract node. So that takes care of the x minus t part of this equation. But now we have to take the result of that and divide it by l. Now l in this case is the wave length. This is how long the peaks and valleys of the waves are. So I'm going to take a divide node that's up in our basic math section here. I'm going to pull that out. And I'm going to connect the output of the subtract node to the left hand side of the divide node. And then this is a really cool feature that we've added to the node material editor. If you click and drag on the right uh, input node here, and I actually drag that out, we're going to automatically place a float value for me to be able to use. So I'm going to just give this an initial value of 1, and I'm going to name this wave length. So this is the length, again, of the individual uh, waves, how far each peak and valley is. Okay. 
So we're gonna start with that. And then now we have X minus T over L, that's great. Now we need to take the result of that and pump that into a sine calculation. So sine is actually at the very bottom of our list uh, under trigonometry here. So we we'll take the sine node and we're gonna pull that out. Now we're gonna take the output of the divide node, go to the input of the sine node. And then the last thing that we need to do here is we're gonna multiply the result of all of this by A. A in this case is amplitude or the height of the peaks and the valleys. Uh, and so we're going to take a multiply node that's back up top with our basic math section, bring out a multiply node. And I'm gonna take the sign is gonna go into the left-hand side. And again, I'm gonna click and drag on the right and then drag out a float value, give it an initial value of one. And then I'm gonna call this wave height. And now what we can do is we have a completed equation. We've copied this exactly, and we're gonna pipe that into the y value, just as it says here in this equation. So to do that, I'm gonna take the result of this and I'm gonna pump it into y of the vector merger node. And you'll notice that we have a moving vertex shader here. We're actually moving the vertices. This is really, really cool to see but I wanna be able to modify it. And that's why we added some of these values in here to float. So the first thing that I wanna do is I'm gonna say, hey, my wave height is too high. So let's bring that down a little bit. We'll try 0.5. And that's pretty good, but I still can't tell that there's waves because it looks like the wave length is too big. So let's try something a little smaller. And there you go. Now you can see that that sine wave is animating across the vertices over time of this particular mesh. Now there's one more thing I'd like to do here on the fly which is I don't have any control right now over how fast those uh, waves are moving over the surface. So what I'd like to actually be able to do is modify time or uh, multiply a value uh, with time and then pump that into the subtract node. So I'm gonna do that now. I'm gonna take out a multiply node. I'm gonna kill the connection here between time and the subtraction. I'm gonna take time, put that into the multiply node I'm gonna take the output of the multiply node and put that into the subtract node. And then I'm going to take the right-hand input of the multiply node, drag out a new float. We'll give this an initial value of one. And I'm gonna call this wave speed. Now, the cool part about this is our final variable that we can control then is we can increase the speed or we can decrease the speed based on this new multiplier. And there you go. So now we have a completed sine wave calculation pumped into the vertex shader that's moving the geometry for us. That is pretty cool to start to see. And again, if you haven't checked it out, check out this Desmos uh, graphing calculator. It's really handy to be able to modify this and do a bunch of different things to the wave. Before we go, I wanted to show you one more powerful feature, just like the playground, the standalone version of the node material editor has this save as unique URL here in the right hand side. If I click that, it automatically gives me a unique URL that I can share with the community to help share creations, to troubleshoot, to collaborate together. It's a super handy tool. It's been super powerful for the playground and we think it's gonna be super powerful for sharing shaders as well. Now, one last caveat to mention before we go is that we're in beta here with the Node Material Editor. It's really early days of development on this. And so while we uh, are gonna try our best to maintain backwards compatibility, don't be alarmed if something changes under the hood as we uh, march up to our 4.1 release and our stable release of the Node Material Editor. Just expect that this might change a little bit. I hope you've had fun. I hope you dive in and enjoy modifying the geometry through the Vertex Shader. Give it a try if you haven't already. Again, that's nme, Node Material Editor, babylonjs.com. Have a blast, dive in, get your hands dirty and try it out. And if you haven't already, I hope that you would consider subscribing to this channel so that you don't miss any of our future videos because we're starting to release a lot more of them. Thank you so much for tuning in and we'll see you next time.